one year after the death of Eric Garner and the situation is still a quagmire. And the reason why the situation is still a quagmire is because no one on any side is serious about getting justice for this man. Not the Democrats here in New York, not the Democrats in Washington, not the Garner family, not the civil rights leaders. No one is serious about getting justice for this man. This is all a dog and pony show meant to entertain the masses. And sadly, the Negro doesn't even understand how he's being exploited by all the players on this board. Now, if the first person that's really exploiting this situation really are the Garner family. Before Eric Garner was killed, you had Eric Garner's wife who admitted that this man is a bum, but now they want to get justice for the man that they called a bum. This is, this is just, it shows the hypocrisy here, you know, regarding their views about Eric Garner. And then we have, you know, the same people making Eric Garner out to be some sort of hero and sort of good guy, but then they, they call him a bum a year ago. That's what, that's what shows how disingenuous they are. The second person who is, you know, really disingenuous is your Democratic mayor, Bill de Blasio. This man is extremely disingenuous when you look at his political actions and his political record regarding this case. Now, here is the Bill de Blasio who had an opportunity, you know, to really ease racial tensions here in New York. Now, you would think that if he was really serious about this, he would have taken steps to begin the process for terminating Officer Daniel Panaleo, the man who choked out Eric Garner. But if you look at his actions, this officer who choked out Eric Garner, even after getting no indictment, is still on the NYPD payroll. His supervisor is still on the NYPD payroll. And he is clearly, and this is clearly after, you know, other incidents where this officer has continually screwed up. I mean, before he choked out Eric Garner, this officer Panaleo already had two federal civil rights lawsuits against him from two other incidents regard with black men. And after the Eric Garner incident, he had an, a civil lawsuit from an auto accident he was involved in. Why is this man still collecting a paycheck? And, you know, it, what really makes it really hit the deal de Blasio appear super disingenuous is that, you know, you compare his actions a year later compared to those of other situ cities like Ferguson, where Officer Darren Wilson resigned, McKinney, Texas, where after the black girl was attacked, that officer resigned, and in North Carolina, where the officer who murdered the black man was fired. Why is this man a year later still collecting a paycheck and still collecting a pension? And this is supposed to be, you know, this Democratic mayor who's supposed to be fair and partial to black people, yet this officer still remains on his payroll, his supervisor still remains on his payroll, and every other state in the union has pretty much gotten rid of what they see as a bad officer, yet this bad officer with a proven track record of failure still remains on Bill de Blasio's payroll. And this is even after your police commissioner says this officer clear seems like he's put his, this was a chokehold, but this man still remains on your payroll. And, you know, it shows his disingenuousness, you know, through his actions. And when you look at Bill de Blasio's actions, he really has shown that he really doesn't care about black people. And, you know, the Negro still thinks that this Democratic mayor is, in, is, is acting in their best interest, but it's clear from his actions. It doesn't really matter. Black lives really don't matter to him based on his actions. I mean, if he really cared about black people and black lives matter to him, again, he would have tried to defuse this racial situation, these racial tensions, you know, by starting the process for terminating this officer. And I believe, you know, that if he had began that process, you know, Officer Rafael Ramos and Wen Jin Liu might, have, might still be alive today because his in, in, indifference and inaction, you know, put the whole department at risk and put the city at risk and his indifferent, continuing indifference, you know, has continued to let this whole Eric Garner situation escalate into a quagmire because, you know, I contrast his actions to those of Rudy Giuliani's actions when Abner Luimo was violated by Officer Justin Volpe. The first thing Rudy Giuliani did was terminate Officer Justin Volpe um, and remove him from the force so that the individual wouldn't further tarnish the department and further escalate the racial tensions. And well, when he did that, that allowed the Department of Justice to step in. But with Bill de Blasio and his ineffectiveness, 
you know, he's sitting there, you know, playing hot pot potato and saying that, you know, I'm waiting for the Department of Justice to do something before I start taking action. It clearly shows, you know, a pattern of backwards behavior regarding him. I mean, it's, it's what, and, it's, and the whole thing is that the Negro is sitting there thinking that, you know, everybody's hedging their bets on the Department of Justice. When you look at the history of the disingenuous Obama administration, another Democratic um, Party organization, and you're going to see that there's, again, they're, ho they're just playing hot potato, but both, both Bill de Blasio and Barack Obama's administration are all holding Kraft Honey Barbecue bottles, getting ready to glaze this Negro yet again. And, you know, what the Obama administration, they've pretty much shown how they regard, you know, these cases. If you look at the history with Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown, you know what the outcome is pretty much going to be. And if you look at the dysfunction, you know, in the attorney general's office, you will see that, you know, what the situation is going to be with Eric Garner. Because, you know, Loretta Lynch was, is basically, she's been set up to be a fall girl by Eric Holder, the former attorney general, and Barack Obama. They wanted her to be the one that everybody blamed for the lack of inaction on Trayvon Martin and the lack of inaction on Michael Brown. But when the Republican Senate refused to confirm Loretta Lynch, the coward, um, what's his name again? Eric Holder had to come out and fall on the sword and do what he originally planned to do in the first place. He originally planned to do nothing, and he wanted all the fault to be on a black woman, when in actuality, this is what he had planned to do in the first place. And when we look at the whole situation with Eric Garner, they're expecting her to be the fall girl so everybody can say it's the black woman's fault. And this is one of the few cases where I'm going to, you know, take a minute to defend this, this woman because, you know, she just came in here and she doesn't even see, you know, the glaze coming for her. They're, they're getting ready to hand her the honey barbecue bottle to glaze the Negro and they're getting ready to, you know, glaze her. But this is how the Democratic Party has operated, you know, regarding the Negro and this whole Eric Garner situation, the Trayvon Martin situation, and the Michael Brown situation. Obama administration has no real interest in getting justice for anyone. They really, for them, they're following the same line as their DNC slave masters um, regarding these cases. And they, again, they don't see, you know, any consequences for these actions. I mean, did any black people go out and hold Barack Obama accountable for the last seven, eight years? No, they didn't. So they feel that, you know, we got away with not doing anything about George Zimmerman and Darren Wilson. So this guy may also get a pass as well. And the whole thing is that to make it extra grimy and extra ratchet, he's going to put it all on the black woman and make her the fall girl. And, you know, this is, this is what's the, the whole, that's what makes this whole situation a quagmire. Everybody's just playing hot potato with it. And no one really wants, nobody in this Democratic Party really wants to do anything. And the third group that really don't want to, you know, do anything in this situation are your civil rights leaders. These guys are also disingenuous. You know, if you look at your Al Sharptons, your NAACPs, your, the leaders of this Black Lives Matter farcical movement, none of these people want anything. In actuality, these people sit there and they talk about this concept of justice, but they don't set any concrete goals overall. I mean, you look at them and you compare them to the people in the civil rights movement and they had goals, they had an agenda, they had a platform. These people just say, I want justice, and all they do is set up marches, protests, and rallies, but at the end of the day, nothing is getting done. You would think that, you know, the first goal in this, if they were really serious about getting justice for this, for Eric Garner, they would have come up with a campaign to get this officer terminated, him and his supervisor terminated, based on his history and his record of failure. You would think that would be, you know, something you would be trying to discuss with this Democratic mayor, Bill de Blasio, who you say that you're good friends with. You think Al Sharpton and the rest of these leaders would say to him, look, if you want to ease the racial tensions in the city, if you want to, you know, deal with this situation constructively, if you really want, you know, to not escalate things, you think you would um, start taking action to get this officer terminated because his record is a, comp is a history of failure. And you think you would be going in on that 
right there. You would think that you would approach this mirror with this, with this, you know, these reasons for why things need to be done. I mean, based on his record alone, you know, two federal civil rights lawsuits, this case, and then another civil case, you think you would be preparing to get this man terminated, him and his supervisor, who needs to be, you know, terminated for misconduct as well. You think this would be your plan, but no, they just come here with this open, broad, and scoped idea of justice. And the whole idea of justice, you know, is so that they don't have to set goals. They don't have to set a platform. They don't have to set an agenda. And the reason why they don't want to set an agenda is because they don't want to be accountable for anything. When you look at your Al Sharptons, your Negro Action Networks, your NAACPs, um, your Black Lives Matter leaders, you look at all these people, these civil rights dinosaurs, they really don't want justice because justice requires taking action. Justice requires setting goals. They really don't want anything at all because if you hold them, because if you set, you know, concrete goals like getting this officer fired, um, setting a plan that, that everyone is involved with, you know, regarding police reform, um, trying to recruit African American officers into the NYPD, um, doing something about these horrible public schools so that we can get more African American males to finish school, um, doing something about this family, you know, all these issues, you think you would be working on these things, but, you know, these African American civil rights leaders really aren't serious about this. All they want to do is milk this situation for photo ops, sound bites, and overall, you know, later on getting more donations for their nonprofits so they can continue to make money off this Negro. They really don't, aren't genuine at all regarding any of these situations. They just, they're just exploiting, everybody is just exploiting this whole Eric Garner situation so that they can profit off it overall. And this is what, you know, makes it into a quagmire because, you know, I look at these, at this case and nothing again is getting done. Here we are a year later, the officer who choked him out is still on the job, his supervisor is still on the job, they're all collecting checks. You have this officer now even talking about how he's eager to get back into, you know, on the street, even after he's screwed up multiple times. And this whole situation is just turned from, you know, a tragic event to a complete quagmire, you know, worthy of the Vietnam War. And it continues to get, you know, more and more dysfunctional because all the group people involved in it are completely dysfunctional. And they have no real interest in, you know, righting the wrongs. All they want to do is, you know, deflect, shame, and, you know, point fingers on each other. But this is the codependent nature of the Negro, and this is the codependent nature of your liberal. And we're seeing them, you know, right in front of us regarding this whole Eric Garner situation. We're seeing them, you know, both sides are pointing the finger. You have the abuser pointing the fingers at the victim, the victim pointing fingers at the abuser. And we have, here we have the Garner, the, um, the mayor and the city, you know, throwing some crumbs at the Garner family in the form of $5.9 million. And we have them still talking about the idea of justice, but again, with no set goals. Everybody is gambling on this Department of Justice, not sitting down and looking at this Obama administration, and it's already proven history in these cases. And we all know, you know, as I've said in, in previous videos, Negro... You know, he fights civil rights like a retarded child playing Super Mario Brothers. And I clearly see, here we are again, people doing the exact same things and expecting a different result when we pretty much see what the outcome is going to be because, again, nobody is serious or genuine about, you know, rectifying the situation and doing right. Not your, not the Garner family, not the civil rights dinosaurs, not the civil rights leaders, not your Democratic mayor here in New York, not the Obama administration and the Department of Justice, not a single person is genuine or serious about, you know, rectifying the situation and making it right. Again, it's all just finger pointing, shucking and jiving, blame and shame game. And, you know, it's sad because, you know, they would rather let these racial tensions and all these other racial issues escalate rather than solve the problem. and But that's just the truth about all these people. Again, none of these people want solutions. All they want to do is keep people from talking about the problem. And they want to remain, keep the Negro community, you know, filled with victims.